Thank you very much. Uh, may I now request Professor Surinder Mehta to please uh, initiate the proceeding. Please. Professor Fridavas Varkiri, who is going to join us by video, Professor Omnath Bimali, Professor Deer Sagar Jain, Professor Sanjay Sarma, who will also join us by video in Kuala Lumpur. Sachidanan, Professor Sachidanan Mishra, you have already introduced. And I am Shere Dhrupinda, uh, the Vice Chair of the Institute for Advanced Studies. A very warm welcome to all of you uh, to this global seminar, this global workshop on Nyaya and the World. I'll just take five minutes to contextualize this workshop. In, 17, in the 1780s, Immanuel Kant asked the famous question, what does it mean to orient oneself in regard to the world. Later on, Bertrand Russell said, justified belief and how we move from one belief system to another is the core of philosophy. And adding to that, the young Cambridge philosopher who revolutionized both mathematics, philosophy, and economics and managed to pass away, leaving us at the age of 28, Frank Ramsey, he said, Philosophy is beliefs to steer by. How one comes upon valid knowledge, the process by which one converts what we see in the world to valid knowledge that we can live by, is the classic problem of philosophy, as understood by Western philosophers. But in India, this problem has been studied for at least 2,500 years. We know, for example, that the Kathavattu from the time of Ashoka has exactly a reasoning structure that has been laid out to examine 278 or so propositions you know, that had to do with the various Buddhist uh, systems that were in uh, currency at that time. So the whole system of Nyaya was developed to deal with the bewildering array of things that we have to deal with for two purposes broadly. One, for success in this world, and secondly, for liberation, however you define it. And by the way, uh, Kant also has a paper called What is Enlightenment? They're also dealing with Aufklärung, right, uh, in German. So they're also dealing with exactly the same issues. But the thing about the Indian uh, Nyaya tradition is that it was not exclusive to any one particular religion or philosophy. And indeed, the Hindu, the Jain, and the Buddhist traditions very happily adopted it. And what is interesting, and the thing that was stunning to me that I didn't know until a year ago, and I'll talk about it on the fourth day, is that the Nyaya system was adopted not just by us in India, but the Arabs borrowed it from us via Central Asia. So the Central Asians adopted it. 
This is Navbihar in bulk and Ajina Tepe. From there, the Central Asians take it to Iraq, Beit al-Hikmah, the House of Wisdom. Uh, the Iranians also borrow it. Then the Crusades are happening in Jerusalem, so the European tradition borrows it from the Crusaders. The Crusaders see it and borrow it from the Arabs. And that then becomes the basis of the university system. So whether you look at the regular of Merton College from 1264, which I'll also talk about, or Sikatnon of Peter Abelard, one of the great scholars uh, of the University of Paris, one of the foundational scholars of the University of Paris, his transformational book, Sick at Non, Yes and No, was precisely about how do you assess knowledge using precisely the Nyaya system. The tragedy of Nyaya is that it has been confined today to the Shastris. So there's a title of a talk that I'm preparing, which I won't give here mercifully, that's for next month called How to Take the Shastras Away from the Shastris After Properly Thanking Them, for being the custodians of all of these Shastras. But until six months ago, I had never read the Nyaya Sutras. And when I started reading them, I could not stop. I said, my God, all the problems that I'm uh, facing in terms of figuring out you know, how to have a better relationship with my family, with my peers, with my network of friends, how to be a better scholar, how to be a better anything, Everything somehow can be conceptualized by Nyaya. So it is very appropriate that it is with this in mind, with applicability, and I could go on forever, but that's not the point. The point is just to introduce Nyaya as something that, in the pursuit of the highest good, this is the highest kind of knowledge that we can get, in that, which will be an aid in that pursuit. So we have we've requested all the scholars to really keep that in mind. We know all of you are scholars of Nyaya, uh, those who are speaking today, and many others are scholars of decision making, or of critical thinking, or of philosophy in general. Um, they're all scholars here, and the fellows of uh, the institute are also here, senior as well as junior, they're all <laughs> scholars. The point is, no matter what we study, and I, for example, study institutions, but everything can be refined and repurposed by a basic understanding of Nyaya. So that is the purpose of this uh, workshop, which is to take the tradition that has been preserved in libraries, in the minds of scholars, in small communities of scholars, and make it available to students around the world. Not just uh, college students, but even high school students. In fact, some of the things that I saw there uh, could be taught to school children as well. And they'll be able to figure out how to, how to, you know, for example, tell fake news from news that is not fake. This is Nyaya, something that we are struggling with as uh, professors, as teachers, as students. So, so all this is extremely important. So uh, it is with this in mind that we have curated this workshop. And with that, I will just request Professor Rao to formally uh, welcome uh, all of us. Professor Rao is the acting director of the institute here and uh, also the vice chancellor of IGNU. So, Professor Rao, uh, uh, over to you. Good morning to all of you. Honorable Justice. Yes, Narsimhaji. His benign presence is an inspiration to all of us. Chairperson of this institute, Shashi Prabhaji, Vice Chairman, Dr. Mehtaji, Professor Arindam Chakravarti, the great scholar, then we would like to listen to him. Martin Kupner, my old friend, Professor Satyadan Mishtari, Varkedi Ji, and other distinguished scholars who are going to address this interdisciplinary 
international workshop on Nyaya and the world. <coughs> Professor Mehta has rightly given us the background on which this four-day workshop that will be carried on and our fellows, they will immensely be benefited with this interaction and the inputs which we will get in the end of this four-day workshop. The theme which they have chosen, it's quite relevant to all of us. And the international perspective of this whole issue and how the things are moving across the globe, they all will be presented over here. And we are especially welcome, welcoming our chief guest, Narsimhanji, because already we have listened to him six months back in one of the lectures in which he was physically present over here to enlighten all of us. On this particular occasion, I welcome you all to this four day workshop. There will be 12 speakers who are going to speak in this four day workshop. And there will be discussion sessions also. In that, our fellows and the associates, they will also actively participate. With these few words, I welcome you all once again to this workshop. Thank you very much. Thank you. So with that, it's a personal privilege and a pleasure to uh, again request Professor uh, or Justice Narasimha uh, to address us all. Uh, I'll be very brief. Uh, he's had a very illustrious career as a senior advocate of the Supreme Court and has been involved uh, in some landmark uh, cases over the years. And very recently took over as a justice, uh, uh, assumed charge as a justice uh, of the Supreme Court and has a long uh, tenure ahead of him in that capacity and already is involved in some landmark cases that are being heard in the Supreme Court. We could go on for a while, but he has a busy schedule ahead of us, uh, ahead of him rather. So I would, without further ado, uh, request him to give his uh, talk on Nyaya and the law. And I would like to add that there's a personal connection that he shares with our chairperson, Professor Shashi Prabha Kumar, in that I believe he studied Nyaya and Vaisheshika philosophy with her, with a very specific eye on its application to the law. And I remember having a conversation with him where he described how he discussed the procedures that they use in the law courts in India today with some of the traditional pundits and the criteria that they use for assessing evidence. And really, it was the modern legal jurisprudence that actually came up short in relation to uh, the Nyaya thinking as it is, as it was applied to law. So with that brief introduction, Justice Narasimha, the floor is yours. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Salin Rath Mehta. Uh, my guru, Sheshi Prabha Kumarji, Mr. Professor Nageshwara, of course, uh, Professor Arindam Chakrabarti, uh, for whose uh, keynote address today we have all gathered. Um, let me start with uh, invoking the very famous uh, Kirtana of uh, Tyagaraja for addressing so many professors who have gathered here. I would say, Endaro Mahanubhavu, Andariki Vandanavu. He says, so many Mahabhav my reverential pronouns to all of you. I actually regret uh, not having my being what my professional uh, compulsions are. 
I am not able to be present there physically, and uh, I have to deny myself the opportunity of hearing to some of the experts, <laughs> experts in the field of Nyaya. Maybe I'll make up uh, some other occasion when I will come and join a conference like this. A very important statement in Bhagavad Gita, which I read much later in my life, uh, where Bhagavan says, Adhyatma Vidya Vidyanam, of all the systems of knowledge, that which connects to the origin of life, so to say, is the best part. The later version, the later portion of this statement that uh, is very relevant for us. Vada Pramudita Maham. I think his very declaration that uh, dialect, the best part of a dialect is me. This declaration is of enormous importance to us. Because the essence of this statement is that Speakers. the correct argument is the vibhuti, that itself is the godhood. That I thought is an extraordinary way in which uh, in Bhagavad Gita Krishna expresses himself and that has a direct connection to the concept of Nyaya. If uh, the ultimate reality is perceivable only through a dialect and of which the best of the arguments is the depiction of the Godhood, then that has a direct bearing on the this particular darshana. And I will connect it to a very important thing where so far as our civilization is concerned, India is concerned, as against the Western philosophy, which bifurcates subjects and examines them in very much detail, thereby providing the focus on each of the subject, be it in labor, where Adam Smith had pro uh, propounded the theory of division of labor. I, for us, there was from the very beginning no binaries in knowledge systems. Everything was a holistic uh, approach. And what was applicable to us, to a person in his process of finding out what the reality is, has also relevance when it comes to his professional activities also. We see this in the way law proceeds in our country. I must tell you that after a almost two and a half years of long discussion of the parliamentary debates, Ambedkar has said that such a big constitution will be of no avail to anybody if the persons who are governing the constitution are not a good lot. He also said that if they are good lot, we don't even need a constitution of this nature. Thereby saying that the essence of it is the individual character. And governance is subject to that. But then the systems that we have developed is that we have developed intricate systems for governance. And uh, we are satisfied with the systems of governance so far as individual integrity is concerned that becomes secondary in the sense that there are no prescribed rules by which men of such nature are forged and prepared for the purpose of running the country. The purpose of uh, mentioning about this is Though Nyaya by itself is intended for Nishreyasa, 
in the ultimate analysis, we have no difficulty in adopting Nyaya and applying it in our day-to-day -day lives in governance too, very importantly. The areas where uh, the need for Nyaya is actually felt are the areas of parliament, the public discourses, the debates, even if be television. And most important part of it is in a court of law, where every day we debate on issues. And then the method by which the debate is to be conducted is by far the concept of what we call as the adversarial litigation, as we have inherited from the British, which is again based on the Western philosophy, where the truth is, where the resolution of a dispute is assumed to be based on the truth of a fact that didn't really help the country for a long time because Happiness doesn't depend upon the truth of a fact. But nevertheless, that's perhaps the only method by which our systems work. Even assuming for a minute that we will resolve all our disputes by finding out what actually the truth of the fact is, then Nyaya offers extraordinary methods, extraordinary methods for resolution of such disputes. I'm speaking about law and courts because I belong to that profession, but I'm sure and I believe that that's equally applicable for any debate at any place in the country. So, Nyaya as it is applicable for Nivruti Mar can be applied for Revruti Mar also. And lawyers, judges, who are practicing intensely in the Supreme Court, High Court, various courts all over the country have no idea about the fund of knowledge that exists in Nyaya. There is a problem here, which I have been highlighting uh, at every occasion that I have to say a few words. If we have a system of this nature, which will enable us to resolve disputes easily, then why is it that we have not resorted to it even after 70 years of independence? The reason is that there are two huge pinnacles that we have. On the one hand, there are people who have attained professional excellence in practice as a lawyer or as a judge. They are completely unaware of the existence of such extraordinary knowledge system, which can be used for resolving problems day in and day out. The other facet of this problem is that those who are sh Shastris and professors imparting knowledge of Nyaya in universities, perhaps are not aware of the utility of it in real life, in professional lives, and in public law, public perspectives. There is therefore a big gap between those who are in need of this knowledge system on the one hand, and those who possess such knowledge but are not able to translate it to be used it for building a better society. So we need perhaps to develop this and build a bridge between the two and carry this knowledge to areas where their utility can actually be felt and used. Today's conference is very, very interesting. That's how I say I am. I have to deny myself the 
opportunity of being here. I have gone through the, the program schedule. I will just indicate to you how very important these conferences are for the legal world. Professor Arindam Chakrabarti's speech on seeking truth, not power, through Vada is of absolute importance to us. Every day we are confronted with situation where the government exercises power or an authority in whom the power is vested. I should say the power, the, 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 uh, the right given under the constitution to perform the duty. So we begin to judge in case, every case, as to whether that authority vested in them is utilized for the purpose of the object for which it is given. If the authority is for bringing about or distribution, bringing about uh, equality by distribution of goods and services, the question arises, was it exercised in furtherance of that purpose or is it merely exercise of power for purposes which do not connect to the object? Nyaya therefore comes in here and perhaps through the, and I'm, I'm sure that through the, after the speech of Professor Arindam Chakravarti, we will be able to come to the conclusion and also get to know the technique by which courts can interpret the exercise of authority and say which is a right exercise or a wrong exercise of power. That's one of the greatest principles that we can take from here and apply in courts of law. I move on uh, with uh, the address of Professor uh, Srinivas Varkedi. Yet again, interpretation of law is always connected to the language that is used, English being what it is. And most of the statutes that we have are to be interpreted day in and day out. And the hair splitting goes on about the usage of an expression is or was, a or a comma, even a full stop. So language becomes extremely important. And our we have a whole shelf of books which will enable us to interpret the expressions used in the statute. Apart from the grant of precision, it will also give an exposition of how to give an appropriate meaning to the word. And then the speech of uh, Professor Martin, I was quite surprised to see this because uh, I was in a committee called upon to now look into how artificial intelligence can actually be used and brought into force in our day-to-day -day working. So now he has selected this topic of Nyaya and thinking and writing in the era of generative artificial intelligence. I look forward, I'll take a copy of his speech and then use it in my deliberations with my colleagues to see how Jaya will be able to help us in proceeding further with the artificial intelligence that's being uh, addressed by him. Then Jaya pedagogy is by Professor Sanjay Sharma. Again, very, very useful for us. And uh, Omnath Dimliji speaks about Mimamsa, again, a matter of interpretation. These are topics. Uh, which are so, and Shamsundar's this discussion today on decision making, and I really can't tell you how important it is. When you need to do a nirnaya, when competing rights, competing interests, multiple interests, which confront us day in and day out, 
and to take a right decision whether a decision should be taken in the uh, in the circumstance of time in the context of time or whether the decision is to be taken in the context of a long term application for our country whether it's a case of the uh, justice system or it's a it's a it's a it's something to be based on fairness apart from the interpretation the principles of application what is the doctrine that we apply for resolving an issue that is siddhanta and in our from our side we are completely unaware of the intricate system that you have developed take for example how to use an example how how many doctrines are there what is the right doctrine what is the wrong doctrine federalism is a doctrine secularism is a doctrine how are we to apply them when does a practice become a doctrine these are all facets which are extremely important for the legal world all these of course are in the context of pravritti uh, we also have speakers to uh, my guru uh, also speaks about uh, uh, nyaya vaisheshika theism and also professor sachitanandra mishra speaks about nyaya and vedanta which ultimately even pravritti marg has to ultimately come and merge with the ultimate reality for which we are all working on so i'll conclude with this by reiterating what i have said that this knowledge system is of extreme importance it needs to be protected its subtle variations need to be recognized again protected and there is a great need to pass it on to the succeeding generations without losing the knowledge that one would get to gurumukha which you may not be able to just to read from books and imbibe that also needs perhaps to be recorded and kept for the future generation to take and uh, apply and understand i have much more to say we have actually experimented once as to uh, how to bring the principles of nyaya to uh, legal practice so when i was a lawyer i had much more time so i created a team of uh, young lawyers and uh, a team of uh, nyaya and vaisheshika and other professors who had the domain knowledge and uh, requested the lawyers to understand the subject and after two months i realized that uh, a very interesting thing happened lawyers being what they are uh, found it extremely difficult they they appreciated it but they couldn't really uh, pick up the principles that have been uh, uh, told by these professors many of them were speaking in sanskrit too by the end of it the interesting thing that i am indicating is that the professors in the pro in the process of teaching the lawyers got to know what the evidence act is and when they were discussing with me they were saying that your evidence act is actually not good i said why do you say that they say that look at these examples there is ativyapti in this look at this section it can't be a provision look at the definition of fact how can a definition be like this how can the logic be like this so one after another they started tearing the evidence act into pieces and then telling me that uh, it could have been formulated in a better way this is perhaps, <laughs> perhaps the first time that uh, the east has interpreted the western <laughs> Uh, uh formulation of the indian evidence act so we re- we did a bit of a reverse engineering and uh, created about five teams of uh, uh scholars and uh, seven of seven to eight of these advocates taught them evidence act 
after evidence was act was taught to them and they reformulated the various principles like examination of witnesses expert document and things like that and uh, the reports that they have given are extraordinary i must say that uh, not only our country the world would have benefited would be benefited by the approach that we have by adopting nyaya to evidence act uh, that needs to be taken forward because uh, after i became a judge i couldn't spend much time on that but uh, i am here only to highlight the importance of this subject and also the relevance of this subject for all of us i conclude by thanking uh, uh, professor uh, shashi prabha kumar ji shailender and the institution for giving me this opportunity and sharing some of my thoughts with you thank you very much pranam thank you justice uh, narasimha uh, what an address i must say uh, you took the time to read through the program and reflect on it and then share your observations i think you've given us some ideas about what we want to do next because we do not want this to be just a one off thing that ends here uh, on the 12th but that in some sense this also sets the agenda for a series of engagements that nyaya and related epistemologies basically have with the various disciplines uh, that you enunciated including law and including generative ai all kinds of things Uh, as you know indian um, padini is generative in nature to begin with so sanskrit is generative so uh, all this we need to take forward and uh, you very rightly said that uh, the law as it is framed currently can benefit enormously from the perspectives of nyaya uh, the there was a movement which you know very well uh, that is Yeah, law in plain English, right? There was a movement that started in Europe and North America, but so to make law readable. But I think a deeper issue is how to have law make sense, right? I think that is probably where Nyaya must come in and help us basically untangle some of the webs that have unfortunately accumulated. So I think this you've given us um, a very important roadmap, at least for the engagement. Uh, with um, uh, with law, and we intend to take it forward, and we will unhesitatingly reach out to you for help in uh, crafting perhaps such a workshop, maybe in Delhi, so that the legal community and even the practicing lawyers and the judges can participate, and uh, hopefully some of our distinguished guests will help us co-curate it with you, and uh, you know really take this forward to make a difference. So thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Yes, please. The floor is yours. I, I can't miss this opportunity, and uh, because it's a very important conference, there's also a need for research in coordinating with the real professional world. World, like for example, what will be the place of money in Vaisheshika? Is it a, a good or not? what is the position of a software we struggle every day but i am sure we will have answers whether the software can be taxed if it has to be taxed it has to be a good is it a good so these are aspects on which i think uh, research needs to be done uh, which i think has stopped uh, and uh, research perhaps is focused on the existing older issues the modern world requires something more sorry for interrupting but i thought this is an important thing which i need to share with you thank you this is very useful advice we intend to pursue it so with that thank you sir you are very welcome to stay on because we are going to without interruption go into professor arindam chakravarty's uh, address If you have a few minutes, please do uh, listen to uh, the first uh, part of it. Um, uh, we also, I see online Professor Sanjay Sharma. Uh, so welcome, good to see you. Uh, I believe you're logging in from Kuala Lumpur, right? You're in Kuala Lumpur right now, or are you logging from Kuala Lumpur? Okay, thank you. Uh, 
uh, and uh, I, I believe Professor Varakeri also is online. Uh, so he he said that he very much wants to. Uh, he missed his train unfortunately yesterday, so couldn't be here. But he will. Uh, he's joining us virtually, and his address this afternoon will also be virtual. So without further ado, I'm actually going to introduce. Uh, Professor Arindam Chakravarti, who's currently the Lenny Distinguished Professor of Philosophy at the University of Hawaii. Prior to which, he was also a Distinguished Professor of Philosophy at uh, Stony Brook. And in a long and a distinguished career, has taught at um, University of Calcutta, University College London, University of Washington, Seattle, Delhi University, and uh, many other uh, institutions, including uh, in years past, the Institute itself. Uh, he has been a prolific scholar. I would uh, not do justice to his immense resume if I started to read it, because that captures only a small part of it. So I'm going to not read his impressive list of books, books and publications. All that is available on Wikipedia, it's available on the web. Instead, I'm going to just take two minutes to share with you Arindam as a person. So last night I was reflecting on what I would say to introduce him, and here is how I would characterize him. You know, I've taught tens of thousands of students, I've known hundreds of colleagues, perhaps thousands of uh, people that I've run into in conferences or encountered them. But if I were to pick one person that I would take with me to a desert island, that would be Arindam Chakravarti. And believe me, he has stiff competition. There are some very, very smart and very, very interesting people. But the combination of smarts <coughs> and uh, interesting is something that was designed for Arindam. And I must confess, and this indicates our age, um, I've known him for now 42 years, if that is, if you can believe that. We were both graduate students at Oxford at that time. We were in different colleges, but by a quirk of fate, the two colleges shared a common graduate residence. So we shared, um, so, so he of course was my senior by, by a couple of years. We also happened to have the same scholarship. So, so we got to know each other very well. And the thing about Arindam that hasn't changed, um, and you know, we stayed in touch, uh, but also not stayed in touch, uh, that has not changed with him uh, over the years, is the fact that every minute with him is lively that he cracks, he's known for what, you know, he, he cracks jokes all the time. He, he loves to tell stories, and of course he's a first-rate scholar. So always, always, there is some principle to be drawn, some thesis to be countered, and some paper that is taking shape in his mind. So, literally, uh, he reminds me in many ways in this aspect of uh, another philosopher that I had a chance to know a little bit, uh, Robert Nozick. And he shocked me by stating that he had never taught the same course in his life twice. Never. As a matter of principle. And I guess he had achieved a station in life where he could do that. It seems, I know, I know you have. You taught the same course many times. Oh, you didn't? You didn't. You also, okay, I didn't know this. All right. So, my goodness. So, so, I didn't know, I didn't know that you never talked. I mean, he told me so. So, I know that that was so. And I looked at the catalog um, at Harvard to verify it. But, uh, but it, it turns out that uh, my choice was inspired, quote unquote, right? Because it turns out to be true of you as well. So, this indicates a little bit of the man to you that he is truly truly an original thinker. In fact, it almost reminds me of the closest individual that I have found to enlightenment. I would name him. He's, he passed away a few years ago. He told me something astounding. He said, so I asked him, what, do you, what is your internal landscape like? What, what do you feel? He said, I'm always in bliss, and I do not have any thoughts. The thoughts that I have are the ones that you provoke in me. When you talk to me, I will answer you based on what I know. But if you ask me the same question twice, I may give you a totally different answer because I would have thought about it for the first time. 
this is what he told me. And I get the same feeling with Arindra, that if I ask him the same question twice, he will give me an equally thought-provoking answer for the second time, and perhaps for the nth time. And that is the mark not just of a great scholar, but a truly path-breaking one. So Arindra, yeah, floor is yours.
censorship that we now suffer from, that you can't bring erotic or sexual references in the text. It's all over. Not because they were perverts, but those who violate this big part of life, out of which each of us is born, by the way, but from that evil obscene act. Even Shankaranjani is born. If they are the what like Shukadev, then Shukadev not have been born. It was Shukadeva, was it? No, celibate. Vyasa was not. Vyasa was ready to 
give it metaphorical and real seeds wherever it was needed. So I'm saying this because Buddha so many in Kusumanjali. This is Shaji Prabhas topic, right? He says, Shruti Kumanya Mam Yoga Mana. This Shruti is a Kumani. If it was a Kumani, it would not have given rise to the authority of the Vidhi. But this is to be done, that is to be done. For thousands of years, an entire society is following that of the Vidhi. Where is the authority coming from? It says, just as if you see Gama Sanjha, if you see pregnancy in a woman, you infer that somebody must have impregnated her. Ishwar has impregnated the Shruti. Vidhireva Tavan, Shruti Kumaraja, Yoga Maha. This is fought to that name, not only by the Mahasala, but by the Advaita Vedanta. Mother Sutra Sarasati quotes this in Gurhartha Lipika, Gita Vashyam, and refuses it. Not because the Yaika are Nastika. Because the Yaika are not proper Vedantins, because they believe in God. They can believe in God, but God has nothing to do with the way, truth of the Vedas. Is bigger than a person. Not because that which wins. In fact, the way we have interpreted it, whether in the Parliament House or in the one that took the note, okay. So we have the chance, it ultimately for all of us means nowadays, unfortunately, whatever wins is true. But that is not true. The thing is, at the end, for a long time, truth may look like defeated, using, and all the lies are meaning. Adharma, adharma, injustice, and the eye, not the eye. It's Develop. It wins all enemies. <clears throat> it works in any Ukraine that may come in its path. Enjoy it. And then, with all its rules, it is destroyed. At the end, attains the again apparent goods. By good life, by also. This was happening all through the Mahabharata. Oh, this is what Satyam Eva Jayati means. Now, philosophers disagree. I'm listening mother fact in the preface to the first and second edition of the first critique. That metaphysician has become a of opinions. But Mahabharata is not faced by it. They disagree. Wherever they say that we are making mistakes, especially the other party is making mistakes, this is a Tawasa that is false. There is a gap in your reasoning. But then when they explain what is the thing, what is the account, the theoretical account of making a mistake. Share this with Sachin Prabhaji, who asked me to give this talk on Chakula, which is the theory of error. And instead of calling it theories, I call it epistemology of error. Because epistemology sounds like not concerned about error, only knowledge. Knowledge, but actually the central topic of epistemology should be error. Why? Like with a seed. With a chutney, you take out the bad part. Errors every day one has to exercise in moral life, in scientific life, in professional life, in management, in running a company. That's the mistakes we are making. Take them out. 
So we need a very robust theory of error. But there are from the Manchuria's time, under which the lists, Chati Manchu, my theory of error. To that you add, you know, the theory, Madhu's theory, you get six, seven theories of error. So philosophers even disagree about how to make sense of philosophical disagreement. And it is not to be regretted or made fun of. Why? Because from today for the first time, I am putting it in public. My interpretation of Kapanta was the question Yaksha asked. That mysterious brain asked on the side of a lethal lake. Yudhishthira's brothers had all died. Trying to drink from that lake. Yudhishthira is the last one. He asked a series of questions like the Sphinx. What are the questions? Power is the way. In that, Veda within that says, Vedas don't agree. Then it says, If you say, oh, those are ancient, they are not different, not all Vedas, and all the Indologists for German Indologists would tell him, well, that is because all these are. Uh, other things have been uh, interpolated in the Vedas. You know, they are not all. If you could find the original Vedas, like the Old Testament, they all have been the same too. Because even Dharmashastra, okay, even to the judgments of experts and think, one thinks on the law, I'm interpreting it not as a lamentation. What is the bad luck that even the Munis don't agree? No. One whose opinion is not different is not a Muni. This is my new interpretation. You are not a Muni unless your opinion is different from other Munis, including your teacher. Raghunath Shiromani is a Muni. And the Chief Justice was asking, we have to do new work on these economic social categories like property rights, like software, where to fit in the Santapada of the system. In Pada, going way beyond the of on the Vaisheshika Sutra, Punat has a big section on self performing thought as a Pada. And he finally says, instead of Reducing it to one of the seven, he says this is a sort of mother. Maybe we have an eighth mother to be sure. He is writing a commentary, not in his own book. Why should she consistent? And he wants to say this is why should she come? He is setting things way beyond seven category. One of them is what law would call the right power. And he says that does not come by mixing the labor in the land. As Locke says in the second letter, in the second episode of, of, of freedom and equality, Locke's theory of, of, of it has to do with mixing your labor in the land, and of course, the American acquisition of the entire, you know, Native Americans land, which they call Indians, is a travesty of how they acquire that. Other things. It should be added as a Vaishyas. And if Sattva Swami took at me from the Vashastras brought in, then at, at the end of my talk, I will show how a contemporary philosopher who is present among us today in a Sanskrit book, in a Sanskrit shloka, has given us an indication of what to do with actually, with artificial intelligence, how to use it in philosophy. I'll end with that, but that's a suspense. Okay. And in the name of originality and novelty of research, we encourage, even demand, difference of views among thinkers. If one of my PhD students, in complete loyalty, fairly sharp my thinking, agrees with 100% with me, and writes a dissertation which looks like an exposition of the Chakramati's views, I wouldn't give them the degree. How are you different? Otherwise, you are doing what is an euphemism of, of, of 
exposition, it is a kind of intellectual plagiarism. If you say, you know, who do you want? I will. And that is not a shoot. That is the biggest tribute you can pay. Shankara. Shankara Chakra. Whose respect for the Vedas nobody can compete with. Because his main contribution is to take all sentences, one like the policy. You are that from Chandogya Upanishad. And this, an entire system of thought, a way of living, a way of running the four mutas, and a way of holding the all of India together, so forth. So everything coming from the Vedas. But the Vedas are supposed to be a something thought. There should be only one meaning. First, first, Isha Upanishad. Most important text of the Indian tradition. So important that Gandhiji said that if all of Indian civilization is wiped out, and only the first person of Isha Upanishad survives, the rest of the civilization can be reconstructed out of that first person. Mm -hmm. In that verse, Shankara interprets. Isha Kasya Punjita, last word, last word. Mahakrita Kasya Srimtana. We straight forward. All the Acharyas have interpreted it. Do not covet other people's property. I would say Isha, Isha Punisha, and the center of Indian challenge. Civilization is a prohibition against colonization. Other land don't take. Yes, Indonesia, Java has Indian influence. Language of Indonesia is the Bahasa. Island is full of. In the north and gods, but we did not go take over the total culture of territory. Because Mahakrita Kasis, coming back to Shankara Chari. Shankara says, state for the interpretation, one sentence. Mahakrita Kasis Vitano. Here Kasya means universal quantification. Do not take whosoever's property. I do not greed over it. Ujjita, the previous word is, you should enjoy the world. Nyaya, no, Nyaya, this conference is Nyaya in the world. Ujjita, you should enjoy, consume the world, don't be non consumer not ascetics. Ujjita, but do not be like a vulture. The word Krita, from which Kritruta comes, comes from the same root from which the Hindi word Kiva comes. Which is a vulture. It jumps. Because when you try to jump, others' property is like a corpse. You're eating corpse. But then Dev Shankar says, it's not dramatic interpretational originality. Atapa. Or we can interpret it. In another way, two sentences in that word, in that sentence. Mark rhythm, full stop. Do not be greedy at all. This upper income. Now, he's interpreting it like an Ayanka. You have to give a reason, you can't just give a TikTok. Why? It is a rhetorical question. Kasya Sri Dhanam. Think about it. Who's after all its property? The relationship between owner and property is unintelligible. And therefore, do not claim this is mine. And he's not doing it out of. But Samadhilal and I used to have this. We used to call some of our word games, word jokes. But one word joke was, and Samadhilal I said, I'm very concerned about reading original text. 
So I said, you know why in India now, Western Indian, nobody has originality. It's because they don't read the originals. If you read the originals, you can do it. Which is not to mean that you translate just the opposite. And those who say, oh, we are saying it out of the blue, no, nothing. This is my own buddhi. They are unbeknownst to themselves, repeating, they are reinventing the week, not new. Novelty comes from engaging in power and trying to see that my swarming Nayakas realize that the Buddhist has some insights. Although we reject everything of the Buddhist. The Buddhists don't believe in Jati Samanis. There are over lives. They believe in exclusion. Nayarika's thought is in the Jati Samanis. The Buddhists think that only difficult occur. Non-conceptual perception is real Brahma. And all judgments like this, this table is brown, this milk is white. These are all false, according to Buddhists. Because you are bringing categories, the moment you bring the predicate category, this is blue. The blue makes you just go beyond your experience, and therefore it is not valid. It is this the Buddhist thing. So we look at perceptions, judgmental, predicative, qualificative perceptions are upper, are non-knowledge, according to Buddhists. And Jared Hunter says, after terrifying understanding of the Bukhiti's position, Tinnamas position, Jared Hunter says, Asmagam Nayayika Nantu Savigal Rakapatakshmayam. Our life consists in that. And this is formulated for the first time in Kashmir by Amino. You would say, but he's not a Nayayika. He's an Admin Shaiva. He is into all his Shaivism stuff. And he's an esteemed. In fact, my weird teacher. He lives in Varanasi now. Actually, he gave a talk in Calcutta. And he said, Abhinav Bukhla is an aesthetics person. He didn't really, doesn't do his stuff. Just lack of knowledge. What can I say? Abhinav Bukhla, who wrote long commentary on the Dr. Shastra 36th chapter. Everybody in Italy, Europe, France, read. 6th and 7th chapter of Satyaya. And we have 30 other chapters. Until the end, there are some something questions. mentions in his longest book, Everything Emotionally, that he wrote an independent commentary for the Sakshat and Nyaya Sutra. Inshallah. He gives the name of that book. He says, Yatha Maya Uttam Nyaya Sutra. So, Mahayu, Katha Mukati Lakhe. It is called Katham Katiluk. Notice, what is he getting out of Nyaya? Not inferences, not through your perception, not the Shara Brahmana, but through your discourse, Katha. Katha is of three types, Vavita Vajanda. This is not Katha Vajanda. So, this Nyaya is Katham Katiluk, his commentary. And you would say, okay. It's just saying it to impress you guys that he also knows me. I know his major text for which he's remembered, not a commentary. His original text is called Tantra Book. It's six chapters again. I have not deviated from Nyaya. I'm still talking about Nyaya. Tantra Loka, he does a mapping that you can't even imagine with all your imaginativeness. In Indian Western philosophy, in depth of Sanskrit, you can't imagine that. He says that all speech through which we write Shastras, words of speech, goes through three phases. There is a completely ineffable, soundless speech place, which is placed in the Tantra, in the Muladha. And that's called Parama. Exclude that, but Terry doesn't even talk about that. The navel, there is Pashyanti, 
this is a state of speech. Then there is Madhyama in the heart. This is country. What does this have to do with the eye? Wait. Madhyama speech, the middle in the heart. Thus, there is an inchoate, undivided idea around the cut. Incidental lemma here. Only last 25 years. Neuroscientists have exploded with research on the cut brain. <laughs> in the intestinal system, they in the cerebral. You find it. So now all my ideas come from here. From Navi, what question did? Matyama in the heart. I tell, I cry. Okay, in part of I think, when somebody hears, they first hear the Bible. They have to then understand what would be the Matyama keep of it. Then deepest the great idea. And they then can identify with it. No, what is my son? In Sultana, explicitly, first chapter, first, first, I think, of Tantra. For younger students and fellows here, I want to say, this is not arbitrary that a chapter of a book should be for Anni. It is for faceless one day. Anni means Anni means one day. Second Anni, second day's lesson. 56 army cards, 56 days lessons, but of course they are very vast. Now he says, where, how do I understand these three stages of speech? He said, in the light of Kautamas Nyayat. How? He said, Vaikari Bhag is Uddesh, Madhya Bhag is Lakshan, Vashyanti Bhag is Pariksha. Isn't that is just genius? And look at the omnipresence of Nyaya. So, maybe the Ashatra Sipravinti, all disciplines, all intellectual and practical ethical endeavors have to go through this, including letter writing nowadays. On the top of the country, what is the subject matter? Your friend mentioned. You would send a memo from one office to another. Such a big beach is a simple invasion. That's in the first sutra. In this whole part book, we will discuss 16 characters, of which only the first two are made up of an epistemology. The rest of it is theory of discourse. From one of the one is epistemology, from the other is metaphysics. What is the rest? Samshaya. How in a debate with Pratipat Tibak, we don't know Because we are doing it. This whole text is not written in a, in, in some Cartesian linear quarter law. It is written, as Yudhuji was saying, that when we talk, a paper is coming in. It always comes, not in you, not in me, but in the space in which we Through the world. And that is why those who think that they can allow sitting like Heidegger in Black Forest, they are made of all big treaties. They are not tapping into the shade of Jnana, which is moving around, which can be accessed only if you go somewhere. So you are not some bridge, not some bridge, not some bad ironate, save us from those enemies. Is there a Three competing theories of knowledge. Or six mutually disagree theories of Erakyativas. Or a circle of twelve internally coherent, entire philosophical systems, but they are mutually conflicting, which are arranged by the earliest available China text of philosophy, which is absolutely important for actually retrieving ancient Vedic philosophy. Although it is a non Vedic text, is by Malvadi Kutwat Sahara So, if you have a wheel to the circumference, there are these arms, the spokes. You know, every wheel, Ashoka Chakra, so many, in our flag, you have arms. So, just as in my name, Ari, just means enemy, but the word Ari means a chakra. 
which has Arab. And that is the mission Sajana. Adina Lina Padajam Sankapani Mukunda. Nalina is Padma. Gada is Gada. Shanka is Shanka. What is I? I means Chaka. I still think Sandini. So, what does it mean? Chaka. Chaka. System of all glory. It's a metaphysical. This is Malavara. So, my conclusion of this section is originality comes from the ability to think from the other's point of view. And I will forget later on, I will not be time. I want to give that example from a contemporary Sanskrit book, which talks about everything that is in the world in our life now. It is not giving us glories of ancient India when everybody seemed to have had three of these in their house. Ah, what do you have? You know, whatever that other. Not our time now. This is a book by a man who is an Advaita Vedanta. What money is? He's trained them. But this book is a new defense of extreme materialism, not for charma. Materialism in every sense. There is no Brahman except my perception. Even refuting inference. At one point, the main doctrine that Charles against the so-called all Indian traditions, Charvak is very important. In fact, he's not the last person. But Jalan Shastri wrote a Charvak version. Many of the Bengali pundits, they are staunch. Believers in Atma and Ishwar, but Nilatma, no self, no soul, only the body exists. It is what they write them. Why do they do that? Why does Satchidananda Mishra write this book? And in that, it discusses computers. He says, Sharira Meva Chetanam, it is the section. Kriya Samgana Kriya Samgana is the Sanskrit word for computer. Got a nice computation of that. Computer is Samgana. Kriya. This child must have been playing video here. Kriya Kriya Samgana Kriya Trishtva Ganam Tavadim Tata. It records information. It gives us weapon. Who is the greatest Acharya? You don't need any teachers this day. There is no one. Vinayama Kachida, Atma, Atma, there is no, nobody thinks that there is a soul inside there. There is no ghost in the machine. Surameva Prabhupada, and then he says, if everybody says no intellectual activity is possible without Atma, there is no doubt possible unless there is Atma. Therefore, that only that child of body cannot have the Dhyana, the Chetana. Chetana has a property, consciousness and property of the soul. Chetana and Navachar Bhav Satchinanda Mishra is refuting that. Don't put him careful as a punishment in an appointed prison in Shrinket because he will be happy there. Because that's where he belongs. Is he loves in Shrinket? But he says, not able, you always compare their body with the chariot, which needs a rush. They haven't seen the Teslas. Tesla cars don't need drivers. He is saying, Dhrishtanta Mugera, Samimana Dhrishtanta Vedetya, Samimana Dhrishtanta Stavad, but Kamjina Atmalu Vilayev, without any soul, without any consciousness inside, Kena Jina Atma Anadishtitam Kriyayam Kamte. So, with the computer example, we can 
Tactical Mobilities. What is he doing? He's trying to understand his strongest opponent. Right? Some European dissertations, PhD dissertations, I don't like reading them and don't follow them. I think they're unfortunate. They defend their own view. And with all sorts of stories, quotations, texts, they said this is the right view, and their stops. No dissertation should be like The last but one chapter of the dissertation, or the first chapter, should be what are you going to say? Can we question from these other points of view? The strongest opposition should be brought up. And then you should try to answer them. Sometimes they need to answer them. In a very crucial place, it's too technical to be here. There is a particular kind of absence called No many hypercannabis can admit this. Bangesha, the main almost text within the is writing the commentary, he rejects it. Ramanath explains the rejection. At the end, he adds a note. He said, by the way, if somebody in their intuition clearly can understand and have an accent, have an awareness of such an absence, just see a pain of fingers here, or single or pain of fingers here. This is the spirit of reading and that comes only when you are disciplined in the text, not just by protesting against, you know, whatever orthodoxy that you don't think you are protesting against. It comes from deep understanding of the text and it's not because the tradition itself criticizes it. There was a very famous philosopher who passed away, who gave up philosophy in the last week. He is of his time. Martin knows his work very well because he turned into a cultural theorist. His name was Richard Rotty. He was giving a paper in uh, Hawaii. He was to Hawaii, East West Philosophers Conference. Uh, Thirty-three years ago, the first time I was invited there, I was in the audience, the smallest little assistant professor from University College London. I'm sitting there. He says in the podium, all traditions, the Greeks, the Chinese, the Japanese, the Indians have big contributions to make an intellectual. But the real essence where Western civilization, especially modern enlightenment, is really unique and is valuable, and no other culture has that, is the ability of a culture to love at its own most sacred things. And he gives the example of Milan Kutelos, the wonderful likeness of people. So, a logician called him copy. He was conducting. So I had placed my hand in the audience. Huge hall. It can accommodate 400 delegates. And this is a 15 day conference. It used to have 15 days. And we used to, now the budget has gone down. We used to pay for at least 150 delegates airfare. And Rocky was specially treated and all that. So I'm raising my hand. I will give you an example. Pratidrishta. Like you say, Pratidrishta. They are calling me. So finally, copy sees me and he points out the cat that you there. What's your point? So I said that there are thousands of examples, but I'll give one from the most sacred text 
वेदन हरी वेद देखा इस वास्ती में रही वेद विच लेटर ऑन उनसे लाज शी इस राउंड जो इतना नज़र बीच विच इस कॉल्ड फ्रॉस मंडू का सुन वेर पीपल बिकॉज़ अंडरस्टैंडिंग who are repeating Vedic verses, they are compared with frogs in monsoon. <laughs> you understand the Hindi of Ram Chaitanya Manas, which comes in the Sundar Kanti Pasha or not? So that's the passage which begins with Kana Gama Nana Bhagara Jata Gora. There it is. Yes. It is that the frogs are protein. Something that one has done, and 
Atman Bali. You look at yourself and you say, Big Mom, why me? Who is this? Who is this? I can't recognize. Is that me? That I did that? And on the constructive side, the whole issue of the Rishwani Mashi, who is a refutation, this is the Yamanaka of the Buddhist, the Yakuma. Second, Anika is an exposition of that view. Anika begins the refutation of Buddhist. At the beginning, like a mother shloka, like an enough, like an auspicious beginning, he says, I'm going to refute them, but here is the word. Even those who do not know too much Sanskrit will understand this. All of you know that the opposition is called Puru Paksha. He says, Puru Paksha Madhya Asma Bil We have to take and integrate within our views a lot of stuff. And Ishraji, I've never told you this. But my hypothesis these days is that after Buddha and Acharya directed death flow to Buddhism in Atma in every way, there was one thing remaining, the view that cowness, darkness, humanity, these common properties of the person, what is common among all computer programs, the property of being a computer program in general. What is common among all numbers? Not a particular Sankhya, which is a goal, but Sankhya. Not Twitwa, the Tunis, which is a number, but Twitwa. Ekatwa is a Jami. Twitwa is a Jami. Who is what said? Tunis, which is a common property, is nothing other than difference from non cause. So it's an exclusion theory of me. Naya Ekarijik said. After rejecting it, suddenly, after a century, all Nyaya is full of one concept, which is a concept of our chinaka, which is actually a limiter, which slices out the other things. I would say, after the refutation of the exclusion theory of meaning to others, the gist of that comes in our chinaka to limit it all. Learn from each other. I think any of these, having engaged in a debate with the Marxist, would give a capitalist economics, economist the best advantage. And his theories will be forever weak if he gets the voice of the Marxist. Similarly, for everybody, it is because. China atheism, Buddhist atheism, Mimamsa atheism, Samkhya atheism, flourished in India. The death of faith in God and recent belief in a monotheistic God. Monotheist is not in the Christian sense, but in a God which is in all of us. But is the great room. By the way, this God. Creator of the world is not admitted by Yoga Sutra. Yoga Sutra talked about Ishwara, but as a teacher, all the teacher. Some Purvesh Amav Guru, Kali and Anavad Shira. Ethics Purusha. Ilesha Karma Vika Akasha in Aparam Vishnu Purusha Vishesha Ishwara. A just a great individual, not the creator of the world. No creator is needed in Sankhya. Nature proceeds by itself. In Sankhya Yoga, which is the ancient. You don't need an intelligence to make nature because nature is unintelligent. Property does not have any consciousness. And you say, Well, Ishwara has to be a Purusha. But if Ishwara is Samkhya Purusha, then he can't have anything. anything. Both Samkhya Purusha in the beginning and Nayaika Atma after Moksha has no knowledge. No consciousness. We don't know these things. We are trying to simplify it and make all the Indian chattels speak in the same voice. The chattels can do that. Mm-hmm. So, we 
before I come to theory of errors. I'll very quickly list not from the ISUT, but from what appears to be an early shown in women, maybe before Buddhism, but there are shown as before Buddhism. She is a woman also, uh, and she's a shoni, explicitly. She's a nun, she's not married. Her philosopher Jean Janaka is very upset when she enters the court. And just as I begin to see, I have heard that Janaka, you are a great philosopher, but you are not attached to your kingdom. Janaka says, You are so beautiful. You look like a Kshatriya, a woman. He saw the past. What do you have intentions to? Are you sort of you know, chasing me? Very obscene things, he said. Janaka in the mala. Okay, why don't you get married? Why did you become? So the wife doesn't answer. She's not upset also. She starts after Dr. Jonathan Tai tried to answer. I know this. I am a student of Panchashika, the great Sankracha at this time. But I don't like this way that you as a young woman, beautiful woman, Shiva. Well, I, if I was Sulava, even quite I would have said whether I'm beautiful or not is besides the point. But Sulava doesn't say anything. And then at the end, Sulava says, Are you done? Janaka, are you finished? Janaka says, Here, what do you have to say? He had forgotten that she had come up with the question. He's going to finish. Sulava starts in Pastana. There are 18 virtues of any conversation, and seven flaws, and six defects. And Maharaj, if you talk, in an assembly, <coughs> you should avoid this. And you should try to interact with those virtues. The 18 virtues of talk consist, they are called virtues, but they are avoidance of the following vices. Well, I joke with my respected. Uh, Closest friend in India, Srinivas Varkheli, when he got this position of 11 University, Sanskrit University, I say, You are now a big vice chancellor. Avoid the vices. <laughs> First, foremostness, I suffer from it. Second, offensive vulgar words. Words of being defined in non vulgar way. Words which are parallel You can only be relaxed if you don't look at the other. Yes, sir. You know, if you turn away from them, only then they can be vulgar. So it's vulgar. The commentator says vulgar. Which reflexively describes what she is doing with Jalakar's vulgar speech is just ignoring. Your speech deserves to be ignored. Then, it says, loud in all three components, dharma ought to come against them. It doesn't serve come, it doesn't serve dharma, it doesn't serve artha. Then it is for a mere waste of time. You should engage it. Incomplete sentences, too laconic, strained tortured phrases, tortured phrases. Instead of saying that I am talking about day to day things. If you say, I'm talking about quotidian things, that is Kashtrafa. You are showing off your knowledge, but you are using, you know, roundabout expressions. Uh, and uh, and then listing nine flaws of judgment, which are not just of language. So I adopt the first person voice saying, I shall never speak with these sorts of intents. Okay. And what are those? Speaking out of lust. You are saying nice things, but that's because you are actually flirting with somebody. You should. So Sula so is actually giving a little lesson to Chanaka. So, okay, out of lust. Speaking out of rage. Okay. Speaking out of fear, different fear, 
speaking of the Greek, if I talk this way to this big businessman, maybe he can be such a out of Greek. Okay. And then speaking like a single fact. And then he says that she says, speaking of the smallness of mind, if it is crude enough, speaking of undignified egotism, there is no one else who can speak of moksha other than me. In fact, Jonathan said that. Moksha and so the things that need nice grace. No, no other is happening. Except that Sulama has promoted herself to the meta level. Instead of addressing the content that John could said, he's saying the way you are talking violates the rules of conversation. And you would say, well, Mahal is showing that how oh, oh, saying that you know these big should if were completely radical and they were, you know. Against her. No, the chapter ends. Only one chapter where Janaka is silent. The chapter ends by this one verse. Janaka hangs his head down and he just does something. In a Nikras town, Nyaya gives the example that what happens when a Prajiva, you don't know the answer to the question in Bhagavad You don't know the question. You write on the ground. He leaves nothing to say. But that's how Janaka ends. So Sulava is the winner. And Sulava is a Vikshuni. And now there's no love lost for Vikshuni. The power of this attempts openly to denigrate the Nasa and to say Baras is the best. But now that's the greatest respect for Vikshuni's knowledge. But it is a Baras book. It's a book for Alfred. And it says one should live, okay? Uh, Speaking out of pity, Karuna or the other person, Ah, Vichara, let me talk like him so that he doesn't mind. No, you should respect him. So if you have an objection, openly say that. Right? And then she gives up six positive verbal virtues. Obey the art, not to give out any signified meaning unsaid. Non equivocal. Abhinna art, you should not speak in double meanings. Judicious and logically well constructed. Nyaya of All speech, for every short thing that you said, must give a reason. Full of grace, selection. Selection. Not leaving room for doubt, not just on the big talk. And if she summarizes the whole thing, in fact, I have, I have a published paper, published in a book, published by all this institution, all Indian history of advanced studies, called Mahabharata now, or Shimla Institute, Routledge has published it. It's called Mahabharata now. The last paper of that has the details of this because I mapped this onto the 24 bigger stars of the of Nyaya. So I call this the Pur Nyaya, Sulabas. And Sulabas is a big shuri. And, and it's my paper. I wish that justice was here because my paper is called with a sorry, double meaning. Just words. So words are not just words, they are which are as for justice. And by the way, she gives a general speech. Where are these where are we generating generatively all these rules, 19 rules, 8 rules, 6 rules? He says, I demand the purpose of these rules is when the speaker, okay, bhakta, and the listener, shrota, and the statement that is made, which is the third entity, the sentence, bhakta, shrota, jabba, kim jabba, jala, okay, without losing any part, into what is, it raises itself into what is intended to be said, only then king does such meaning come to light. Samaveti vivakshaya tada aso artam prakashate. If they all express the vivaksha and don't be stopped. But here the 
speaker is not distorting the intended meaning of the hearer. The hearer is not distorting, and there is a standard meaning, grammatical, semantic, of the sentence in the language. And neither of them is distorting that. That is the ideal situation. This is a deep principle of all the conversation. And remember, conversation is at the heart of politics. All politics, uh, it says, is on the action of speaking to each other. There is a small sutra called statement. It's very suggestive like a poem in Wittgenstein's philosophical investigations. Many theories of meaning are there. At one point, Wittgenstein says, meaning is like going up to some. Up as a this is the heart of conversation. Even if you say it, your enemies. I have never heard that very really first. Just to provide you for the first time, John Wayne. And it has a biome for the enemies. A biome for the friends. Your business. Theory of knowledge requires theory of care. We are making mistakes all the time. Some mistakes can be corrected. Some mistakes, we know their mistakes, cannot be corrected. For example, it's nice back garden here to watch the sunset. But do we see it? Sun going down. Everybody knows it's an angel. Sun is not moving. Can you try? Just try this. You know so much science. That when you see the sunset, you will feel art is going on. That's true. Next to this glass, I will keep a hibiscus red chapa, chapa, kucha. The glass will look red to you, even if you know. These are errors. Errors we can intellectually correct. And why is it so important? Because all the suffering behind says comes from Mithya Gya. Mithya Gya means false cognition. Now, false cognition comes dosha, defilements. From dosha, we take up initiatives which are ultimately bound to be frustrated. Somebody spends all their life writing lots of books, hoping you will get the Nobel Prize or something. He doesn't know. Even if he gets the Nobel Prize, after he dies, that prize might be stolen. <laughs> right? And from whenever you take such frustrating activities, you ultimately suffer. Why? Because suffering comes from what suffering is. Suffering of the fetus of the little baby, baby coming through that channel. Karbo Upanishad has a description of how constricted the baby is. That's why the baby cries. So, comes from Jang. Jang comes from pregnancy. He comes from Dosha, but all of this comes from Mithyakya. And this Mithyakya, if that can be cut in the room, then Tattukya will have Dukkha Moksha. You see, what does liberation? I am not interested in liberation. Everybody is interested in liberation. Why? Because nobody wants to survive. You see, but Acharya says that which we do not want to remove is not fair to bear. If you are in some kind of all erotic practice and you like being whipped, then whipping is not your dukkha. Right? You don't have to talk about this for what practice. They are quite straightforward because many of us get into a marriage hoping everybody knows that marriage is involved marital borders. We enjoy that. Because if once you are divorced, you will feel 
अरे अभी चमक नहीं पड़ती है Now, if there is a kyan 
see that distance, Desdemona is taking something from a man called Cassie. Oh, Desdemona, and this is kind of trying to get her attention. But what you thinks Desdemona loves Cassie. Desdemona is real, the anchor chief is real, Cassie is real, Othello is real, everybody is real. But actually, it is the man who is in love with Desdemona. Desdemona is in love. Which has been reversed. This transposition, this is called Kanyana. See things otherwise. See real things. As a result, you have, don't have to be saying that some of the stuff we see are out of nowhere. Everything is real. It was in the past. I have seen gold, I have seen silver, I have seen blue, I have seen a snake. This one happened to be just a shiny rope in the darkness. In my Shila walks, I and then I make the digital task. By the way, if you have a look at the task, you can't touch it, not realize the question. So I can get with right. I've seen the non existent snakes. Are there two kinds of snakes? Existent one and non existent one? You might go to a very special zoo in New York and say, Okay, I've seen all the existent snakes. Show me the non existent one. No, there's no other snake. It is a part snake. It's a snake. It's a real. The room is real. See, I told you. You just missed the difference between the room and the snake. Just by missing the difference, I will jump. One doesn't jump out of missing. One has to see them. So I have seen. I have seen this. That which is not found. Very complicated document of a special kind of perception, which is called a local perception. The memory itself is creating a big by eyes. And the past object. Not tasting in lunch in the observatory house, then give you a bowl of a tart and pickle. Open is required for pickle, this will pass it all. Just pass the potato. So, that pickle. I am not tasting it. Taste in the past. But as soon as I see my tongue, this is the heart of your tongue. Here comes the great mediator. Well, ultimately, take the theory of error and call everything that we see with Java. But before that, he gives a very robust explanation. And that explanation is in the spirit of a That's it. In this sense, it's also very unnecessary. Even the elements are correct. There is a part from the world which goes somewhere. The picture quotes that Ravana has a real way. If you once let your cognition and consciousness infect it, get infected by error, then ultimately it's all great to get yourself. 
that it happens to be Venus. So, what is happened to this? Uh, so, in an exaggeration, Mahabharata says, Maso Munil, Yasi Matam Munil. Not that. A very legitimate body comes. Okay. This body was there in the history. So what is the worry? Two worries. If uh, cognition leads to action, and two people have one thing that be the other thing is not. One thing is that you should offer sacrifice to butchered animals to the gods. Like the Kashmiri Shaiva still believe. Of this one day, the whole country just already was the Kashmiri tribe took different types of meat and offered to Shiva and enjoyed Mushra. So the first question was, what is the idea of the It is not a it is a thing. Yes. But why should we think that the idea was that this will lead to anarchy? Now, what anarchy means? Anarchy means a reign as a king rules, like the word rule comes from rain. Everybody. If they don't follow the same rule, then we think it is anarchy. But we have forgotten to mention one thing. As he has told me, there is a common education. You saw there is no scope of disagreement about the rules of debate. So, not coming, not the issue. So, basic human humors. And this is Dharma, is the real meaning of Dharma. Not both of what is that? Panchalakshana. I am so something. How I grow and in reality grow? As they not. So nobody is saying that I'm not saying if there's a money, who thinks that stealing is the good thing? Then you should have a story and know that. So the basic rules will be the same. And after that, all questions important. Like, should we marry and make children or should we not? There is no problem. Okay. Those who think the last thing people, you cannot get ultimately anything unless you completely give up and you start arguing. And others will say no. Right? Some will say it's not a people, and some will say like Krishna. Then look at the morals of Chandra. One thing. It is not leading to anarchy, that's my answer. It is leading to difference of behavior as long as the basic rules, and these are not rules of the government. These are rules, and all of these five rules. They come from one room of Mahabharata surprises. And you may think there is no time for this. But so it's not missionary in the chart of the book. Has given us a peculiarly a new insight as a morning disagreeing with everything. Instead of keeping sex and erotic love, it's kind of the moon. He says it is the root, it is the foundation of all ethics because it is only that. That humans naturally want to not just satisfy themselves, but to satisfy other It is not an exception, but yeah, what can do? You cannot do have to have it in actual animals. This is the most human thing. Because in the best moments of love, you are not thinking about your satisfaction. You have to keep on it. And Mahabharata says, not a 
तेषु संगत्यात् प्रतिपूजं चरात्मा संक्षेपतो हि अयं इत्थं नो ओनली वी टू से एनी मैन हु सेज आई विल इनफ्लुएंस ऑन यू समथिंग दैट आई कैन नॉट टॉक अबाउट यू इज नॉट बिकॉज़ द हार्ट ऑफ यू द मुनि हैज टू पास बिग बिफोर इट इज से इज नॉट जस्ट समबडी हु इज फॉर द फन ऑफ इट जस्ट बट some have to listen to like that oh but if it's it is it no that's not you have to find the human and what is human not to be done so you are so now shakta pratishavam kanch is that much there is no doubt about that and give a grant about other matters which are my major matter you should be clear
very different mood. Yes. Stop. On screen. in reference to the scriptural wisdom that anyone not asking a question should be treated as a thing. My question is because it is uh, the statement which is spread across the scriptures, the learned uh, speaker and put it, that we should treat friends and foes. All right. Ute Bharas Bani, very, very beat Sama. My question is that how we are to distinguish that who is to be treated as a friend and a foe, how a foe or an enemy may be designated as but a very difficult question to answer and definitely not in Nyaya, which is a methodology of debate and uh, adjudicating between good and bad reasoning. You will find, and this is not difficult only for philosophers. As you know, from your life, even a spiritual life, even shishas, there are no bad stories in. Uh, in this scripture, there is a beautiful, heartbreaking story of a man who died of because his friends were his enemies. He was a student of a good teacher in a university or school, but he was a very quiet person. And all the other boys, like, uh, like three years, you know, that they used to tease him. They made false allegations about him, and the guru got angry. 
the teacher because of this. And they, the Guru said, I will test him. Do you believe everything? Do you follow my, my advice? He said, yes. He was a very docile child. He said, you give me hundred not thousand people's fingers cut off as a garment. His name become Angulima. And he thought it was not getting me. But I find him a friend. He thought his schoolmates were friends, but they were actually enemies. And it happens to my But you know, I think in Sikh wisdom, which is continuous in Baba Gita, there is a very strange criteria. And the Gita gives an answer. Which when I began to answer, I did not think about. Just now, I thought about ultimately. Others are not our enemies. Other are in our own enemy. The real friendship does not happen with another person, with oneself. But the point where you have no one to but why will you And it doesn't so clear. It is not just to hit the ground. It says how you become an enemy. Padma Atma Atma Sita. Jena Atma Yim Atma Nachino and Atma Sita. But the Atma Yim Sita. If you cannot win over your own impulses, if you are not in control, then you are in the first thing. Another question. And this, this verse is ending. Why? No, we think Indian culture always says only an expert can help you, only a teacher can save you. That may be the Catholic book. But Gita says, You are your own stupid. Uttare is Atman, Atman Atman. It doesn't say that there is no difference between the Shatru and Dukkha. Unless there is Shatru and Dukkha, you cannot practice the Mata. Now, Shatru is a bit very interesting. Thank you for the question. 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 I would rather have people from short uh, ask them. Anybody from on the video who would like to ask Sajay or Professor okay. Varaki? So uh, I, I have a question. The, the, uh, the, uh, there, there's a, uh, there's a, you, you mentioned that, uh, the uh, I have so many, I, I'm just trying to figure out which one. So, the, one of the most beautiful metaphors that you used, I was very struck by that. That process of speaking is basically going from the para to the bank. Any question? Yeah, all the way up to bank. And then the process of assimilation is reversing all the process. Beautiful. Beautiful. And then, but he's right, going all the way from Brackley to Vandana to Vashanti, then to Para. Say a bit more about that. This is striking. And, it, and it, by the way, it puts cognitive theories in a very different way. Obviously. And cognitive theory and the so called of God meditative practices, they are not made curious about it. And you know when about the talk when he talks about this. My point in the paper was not only about communication as one way from inside to out, another way from within, not the But that he thinks that he's captured by the green like of the shark. That's peculiar. That's still the research on that the end of context of a book should be first briefly mentioning everything that you are going to talk about. This is just topics. 
16 quadratus we talk about and we will show how knowledge of that 16 quadratus will lead to some of the ending of all the time so to be honest this is the this is the mission and then you define it to the 16 and then you take the definition and that is called the function so we said make sure is corresponding to the function mm. definition is not new and my question is just the answer but that is not well this is why i said everybody if you want original ideas it's good thing that all of it is not translated she did take it from home now If they are ready, that's material. If let me buy that knowledge, we take collective activity, and the activity satisfies its purpose, then it is knowledge. If the activity is frustrated, it's a rough and ready criteria. And the example, parallel example. But remember, all these town rules will have exceptions. You can give a general criteria, but there will be exceptions. But the presence of exceptions should not make you skeptic. Therefore, not like an error of the signal. Okay. Complimentary or not, this is the highest criteria. There are other tools which think that knowledge certifies itself with the external certification, and error is eliminated by itself. Nyaya does not accept that. Nyaya says that. Knowledge is to be certified by practice. For example, you are going on a hot day, either in the city sometimes or in the desert. Okay. What happens if it takes me to a desert island? This may happen. Right. So, we are trusting. There's a lot of common desire for water. See what is this knowledge or is this mirror? I says, very hard at it. If it satisfies slaves your thirst, it is knowledge. But for no interest in the truth, if you go and there is nothing, you try to drink it and there is some sand, 
Addressed what I was going to ask because it also presages what I'm going to say tomorrow. Thank you. Excellent. Excellent. So the other thing is, I'm glad I did this. Because, uh, by the way, uh, Adam has to take a train back at 2 30. Obviously, he has to leave at 2 30. He will us at lunch. Please continue this conversation there. And I must tell you just two quick thoughts before we pay for lunch. We have to meet here at 2 30. Right? So we have about an hour for lunch and half an hour for walking around. Uh, the, 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 uh, I love the fact that there's so many resonances that uh, started from Justice Prasad's talk. Right, he was just looking at what you said, the table contents right, of his workshop, and you know, getting excited about that. And then you referred to so many things that are yet to come. We will uh, obviously take up some of the things that you mentioned. And this is in the going back and forth, as Naga Sena said, right? In the scholarly gap back and in the scholarly going back and forth, the what and the weft, uh, whatever it's called, who, who the, the, who the, who the, who yeah, that's how the thread of knowledge is being worked. Okay. Yeah, thank you. And secondly, uh, if Tibetan kids can do it in the Sera Monastery, Surely, kids all over the world to do it, and it'll be a lot of fun to really have a debate structure. I mean, we have uh, organized debating uh, unions and so on, but nothing that is so much fun and so physical and so visceral at the same time. So, I think, oh, oh I see Professor Varaki has a question. Let me just finish this part, and then you'll have the last words. Uh, we need to create. I don't know, perhaps with your help and that of the excellent scholars here, a short 20 page manual on debating. Obama. Debating in a view in, in a way that allows you to be aware of the deepest objections that you face so that you develop your mind and your movements and your spirit and your stuff, right? Be worthy of being a participant in a sabha that demeanor. So, Professor Varahi, you have the last part. Maybe the last question. And I'm sure we'll queue ahead for a few minutes. 
I have, 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 I